Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It's May 22nd, 2015. Let's get straight into our news tonight. Yesterday, we had a chance to go out and have a protest, a rally at a Planned Parenthood here in South Austin. And the issue about this was we wanted to bring attention to the Black Lives Matter movement, not to take it away from the police brutality, because we definitely know that is a very large issue in this country, not just to blacks, but to all races as well. What other races? Well, there's a white guy named Kelly Thomas who got beat to death by police in Los Angeles, or at least someplace in California. It didn't make the news cycle much, even though they beat him to death over the course of 20 minutes on camera and nobody went to prison. But to expand beyond that, we said, why just cap it with the actions of police? How about we expand it out to something else that's another huge issue in the black community, something of the name of abortion? So we went out there trying to educate people about the history of Planned Parenthood and also Margaret Sanger, its, uh, its founder. And we were greeted, in a sense, by a group of communists, even though it's somehow politically incorrect to call somebody a communist, even though they have a communist Facebook page where they're walking around with hammers and sickles and they have tattoos of Stalin and Lenin, but I guess that doesn't make you a communist. But now we see this. Communists call for red terror murder campaign to exterminate America's middle class. And this was evidenced by one of the comments by one of the young ladies who were out there who told David Knight's wife, a very lovely lady who I'm sure just goes home and bakes cookies and is a very personal human being. She said, your white middle class agenda will not stand and we have to get rid of you. You will be destroyed in the middle class. Now, do I think this young girl personally is going to go out and kill people? No, but we can see this being echoed with this article here. Their true intentions of the Communist Party in general, not this group in particular. And it says the communist group advocated for the death of the bourgeoisie middle-class Americans as part of a red terror murder campaign, raising concerns over the possibility of politically motivated violence this summer as communists are increasingly leading anti-police protests across the country. Now, once again, I'd be the first person to tell you if the police are doing something wrong, whether it be here in the city of Austin or someplace else, but I don't think killing police is the answer. You know, you, you can't just go out there and shoot somebody just because they have a badge and the gun especially if for some reason you don't think they're going to shoot back at you. It's a, a very silly ideal indeed. And also, if you go to the article, we have a picture of the tarp, the litter they left on the lawn. So just everybody at Planned Parenthood who had to go out there and clean up the trash of this group, be aware that is not our tarp. We left that there because we didn't want to uh, pick up after them. We took a piece for evidence. And they also left their Wendy's trash out there. So everybody at Planned Parenthood, that wasn't us. We cleaned up our garbage but the true garbage was out there uh, trying to cover people's signs with tarps. Now let's talk about this. Conspiracy theorists are causing militants to abandon ISIS. A report in the official propaganda magazine of ISIS this month bemoans the fact that the terror group is losing members because of so-called conspiracy theories that Western intelligence manipulates and controls extremists for its own agenda. Well, just in case you haven't seen movies like Charlie Wilson's War, which isn't the most historically accurate movie ever made, but it gets in the broad strokes, kind of how these guys came about. Think about Reagan, who I believe said uh, the Mujahideen has, the, has as much integrity as our founding fathers. Mrs. Clinton saying that we created the Mujahideen, the airdrop grenades that we send to groups like ISIS, uh, you know, the, all the military equipment that ISIS gets, and the, uh, of course, the troops coming out with the hashtag I did not join campaign saying that I'm not going to fight along ISIS on Monday, then be their best friends on Friday. So these are the type of things we're going on. You can go research all the stuff that we've put out over the last several years here at InfoWars and see how connected these guys are at the hip to the uh, military apparatus and also to the CIA. So they're saying that when they, the news gets out, I guess, over there, that they're pretty much backed by Western governments to an extent. Not everybody in, in the government is in on it, but enough people are to keep these guys funded and being the uh, scapegoat of sorts by arming them with the tools they need to fight not only military, but also innocent civilians in their wake. Now let's talk about the FBI now, because you would think with all the intelligence that the FBI has, they'd be able to go down and crack groups like ISIS, but they had to come to Joe Biggs. When Joe Biggs went down to, down to Mexico, they said, hey, Biggs, you know, what'd you find down there? We can't go down there and investigate ourselves, so they had to come to us to find out what we know. And I'm not knocking the FBI. They've done some very questionable things that I'm not happy about. But I think the majority of people in the federal organizations and the military and your police departments are decent human beings, but enough people are doing enough bad stuff and getting away with it. It makes the entire organizations look bad. 
But now we see the FBI admits that no major cases have been cracked with the U.S. Patriot Act. So you guys recall the Patriot Act. Bush ran this through. He said, hey, we need to be able to spy on you all the time in all manner of ways, whether it be your cell phone, your computer, whatever else, to track down these dirty terrorists, the terrorists that we are funding, as we just talked about in this past article. And even with this, the FBI admits that they have no major plots that have been foiled by this dragnet surveillance. They have plenty of naked selfies and uh, sexting conversations and all that stuff. You guys know this. And even if you don't think the government's in on it, just think about how they hacked into the phones of Kate Upton and all these other starlets, and you think somebody at the NSA can't do the same thing, then if you believe that I have some oceanfront property back in Oklahoma and from my front porch, you can indeed see the sea. And we'll end tonight with this before we go into more special reports. Video, man holds alleged carjacker at gunpoint until cops arrive. Just stay there and wait for the police. It's that simple. Okay. You're trying to rob me, I wasn't trying to rob you. You weren't trying to rob me. You just get in random people's cars, huh? No, I thought you were my friend. You thought I was your friend. You thought I was your friend. So you woke up stupid this morning. Tell him and that's it for this segment, but stay tuned. We have more special reports, and also David Knight is going to be in studio talking about a trade agreement they're trying to ram through this Memorial weekend. Stay tuned. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. That's my work. I don't have a website. I don't have a YouTube channel. But I'm a crazy fan of Alex Jones. So just if I can say anything, go out there and do what you can, and let's fight the new world order. There you go. All right. Thanks. All right. Awesome. Yeah. 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 That was cool. All of you out here are simply amazing. God bless you.
I'm here at Camp Swift right outside of Bastrop, Texas, where starting July 15th through September 15th with members of U.S. Army Special Operations Command and service members from the military's four branches, an exercise that has never been done will take place. Among some of the planned exercises will include soldiers moving undetected amongst the civilian population. Roy Boyd, chief deputy with the Victoria County Sheriff's Office, said, they're going to set up cells of people and test how well they're able to move around without getting noticed in the community. Can't they already move around the community? They are Americans, right? The Third Amendment of the Bill of Rights states, No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house, without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Ambiguous under these conditions? Maybe. But how are we to know if they are soldiers if they are moving undetected, possibly into our homes? The Fourth Amendment states the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, support by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. There is more at play here as the Jade Helm Playbook, Master the Human Domain, intends to collect information on who you are, what you do, who you know, and enter you into a demographic to be analyzed. Dissidents will be dealt with. Sound a little extreme? The 2006 U.S. Military Police Training Manual targets civil disturbance operations within the United States and Army Manual FM 3-39.40 Internment and Resettlement Operations details the overall need for PSYOP officers and prison camps that will be used if the plan is implemented. But let's be clear, this is a blatant PSYOP, not a martial law takeover. We at InfoWars are trying to make you aware of there's a big difference. The massive population of the U.S. must first be conditioned before the next phase rolls out. And the hostile areas, according to Jade Helm, must first be put in a chokehold by a corporatic government that can no longer and will no longer sustain the pursuit of happiness of its subjects. Most people I spoke with were unaware and trusting of a government dominated by foreign banks and eroding trust. Well, I have a hunch that that may not be completely true. Yeah. They, they may be trying to blend in, but they're, you know, I still think it's military training. It's 12 o'clock. Does any of that <laughs> ring, or, or is it not, really. not concerned? No. No. I mean, they can bring people in here and stuff, but if they're, I don't know, I am fine with the... Yeah. Full trust in the government? Yeah. Others... Not so much. I may not agree for, with everything that um, the governor does, mm -hmm. but I the appreciate new one? either one, yeah. Perry or Abbott. Yeah. But I appreciate them standing up for Texans and their rights because, unfortunately, too many people don't realize about the Ninth and Tenth Amendment. You know the history of the war and how it really started. With the shooting of the, of the boat out, in the, it was it was it was wrong from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. all the wars since then have been for something not about protecting people in our country. There's nobody invading us. It's about money and oil and stuff like that. I don't know. I just the industrial military complex <clears throat> has gotten way out of hand to me. Eisenhower said a long time ago. In the councils of government, we must guard, guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic process. From Camp Swift in Bastrop, Texas, I'm John Bound for Infowars.com. A trade agreement, something that's very important that affects us not just here in the States, but also people all around the world. And now we see they're trying to ram this thing through on the midnight hour on a holiday weekend of all things similar to what we saw with Obama and the National Defense Authorization Act. Now they're coming out again with the TPA. And for more on this, we have David Knight. David Knight, what's going on with this TPA agreement? Well, of course, you're right, uh, Jakari. They did this with uh, the establishment of the Federal Reserve on Christmas when most of the people were gone. Uh, Obama did it with the NDAA on a New Year's Eve, put this thing through. Today, Mitch McConnell came out and told the Senate, you are not going to go home until you pass this trade agreement and reauthorization of the FISA Act in terms of what they want to do with dragnet surveillance. So he laid that ultimatum out there for them. I hope we'll have an update from the bill managers here shortly. 
but I want to remind everybody we're going to finish this bill before we leave. We're going to deal with FISA and we're going to deal with highways. There's a path forward if people want to take it that could complete all of this work at a reasonable time, probably sometime tomorrow. Or we can make it difficult, but the end won't change. And so I would just encourage at least some level of cooperation here because we're doing TPA, we're doing FISA, and we're doing highways. I yield the floor. He has been delaying this, he said last week when they got the authorization to move ahead in the process that they were going to pass this this week. He waited to the very end of the week because of course that takes it out of the news cycle. We've also mm -hmm. seen a document dump from uh, Hillary Clinton today as well. But here's the concern. They, they did not pass the Trans-Pacific Partnership yet. They did not pass the uh, TTIP, the Transatlantic Partnership yet. This is going to give authorization for six years to fast track trade processes, to secret negotiations just like we've seen. Okay, we should call this Obama trade, and we should understand that the Republicans are full on board with this. They always run this through when there's a Democrat as president, just like they did with NAFTA and Bill Clinton. They know that the camp followers of the Democrats, will, many of them, will just follow blindly behind their leader, even though this is going to be a massive export of jobs. It's not going to be a uh, free trade agreement whatsoever, and of course, that's the way they get the GOP. The GOP will line up behind their leadership thinking or telling the uh, mainstream uh, people, the people who follow them, that this is about free trade. Therefore, it's about good business. It's not about that. This is managed trade. Now, much has been said about what's going to happen with these trade agreements, which are really treaties. That's the other big lie. That's something that Obama did uh, to run through Obamacare. They called it a tax instead of an individual mandate in order to get it through the Supreme Court. They're calling this an agreement. They're calling it a partnership. So they can run this through and pretend that it's not a treaty. Listen, any agreement, by definition, a treaty is an agreement between one or more nations that affects peace, commerce, or other national, international issues. This is a treaty. It should require 67 votes in the Senate, but instead they're going to get only 51 to pass it. That's what this is really about. But it goes far beyond that. Let me read you some of the stuff that's going on with this trade uh, promotion authority. This is from their own documents explaining it. They're going to have 45 days whenever one of these agreements is presented to them, 45 days to bring it to the floor, to run it through the normal process of going through committees, to be vetted by the majority leaders. If they don't recommend this to be voted on the floor, it will automatically go to the floor. That's the default. So they're removing all the uh, things that might block it or even slow it down. Once it gets to the floor, they're going to only have 20 hours to debate it. No amendments, no dilatory motions, they say. Nothing that's going to stop it. So they can't amend anything, and they have limited debate at that point. They're going to shut down filibusters in the Senate. To sum it up, this is what they say. The procedures, the expedited procedures, and you know what? When they talk about this being expedited uh, procedures, this is really, they ought to call it Federal Express Next Day Delivery because that's precisely what this is. Everything has been rigged to make sure that this is gonna go through immediately without any alter alteration, without any opposition, without any discussion. See, this is not just secret for the public to see. This is without any discussion or change whatsoever, just ramming this through. They said three key elements, of course. That is a mechanism to ensure timely for floor consideration. They're going to ram this thing through. Then they want to limit debate and they're going to prohibit amendments. Anybody who voted for this in the Senate, anybody who votes for this in the House is voting to shut down our Republican process. Our Democratic Republic has a process where we have leaders that we elect. They have an open discussion of this thing. This is what they're shutting down because this is another step to world government. Combining these different regional uh, trading groups, they always do this as a trade agreement. Now they're working on the sovereignty aspects. They are now unifying North America with Europe, unifying North America with Asia. That's what's behind this, and there's going to be a lot more of this coming down the pike. One last thing, Jakari. Today they had an amendment by some Democrats, and they, uh, it was shut down by Orrin Hatch. The amendment offered by the Democrats was to show us what this Trans-Pacific Partnership is going to be. Show the public what this agreement is going to be. Orrin Hatch shut it down. 
And this is what he had to say. He said, I don't know what's in the TPP myself. So in other words, we have he to pass it. We to have to pass it. In it. Exactly. They're doing the same thing, except this time it's the Republicans working with Obama instead of the Democrats working with Obama. Have to pass it, see what's in it. He says, I'm curious to see what is in it myself. I'm going to be one of the most interested people on earth when it comes, if not the most interested, you know, when they finally agree. Yeah. Look, this deal is done. They're ready to put it on the floor. They're going to demand an expedited overnight Federal Express vote. And that's precisely what they're going to get. And if he wanted to see what was in this, Jakari, he could have walked down and taken a look at it. There's only been two or three senators who've even bothered to do that. 98% of them could care less because they've been given their marching orders by their multinational corporate masters to get this thing done. That's the bottom line. Absolute total hip hypocrisy and selling us out. That's what it's really about. We've got one more chance, and it's a slim chance. But here's the, here's the only good news, Jakari. The fact that they would feel that they have to do this over a Memorial Day weekend because they're afraid of the public paying attention to what they're doing. Mm -hmm. We can shut this down if people will pay attention, if they'll wake up to the fact that this is not about free trade. This isn't even primarily about losing jobs. This is far broader than that. This is about uh, ownership of everything. This is about who is going to be in charge of government. So whether it's going to be multinational corporations with their investor state relationships, elevating themselves to the level of the uh, sovereign governments, or whether we're going, to con we're going to go the other way and give people more power. If you get involved, if you pay attention, you can shut this down. Just as we were talking about earlier today, we could shut down the war on Syria. We could expose ISIS as being a tool, a creation of Western intelligence. We can affect things if you will pay attention, if you will call these people and put pressure on them. We're going to have one more opportunity to do this. But now that they've passed this uh, TPA, it's going to be very difficult to stop this and future agreements. And not just the TPA, but also the Patriot, Patriot Act as well. They've yes. got to ram all this stuff through holiday weekend. Holiday so. weekend. You guys have to get active. You have to get out there. You have to get on the phone. I know it's uh, the late hour. and You may not get anything but a voicemail, but at least call these people up, even if it's after the fact. Say, hey, yes. I saw what you did. I do not appreciate that. You will be out of office if you ever do something like this again. And once they bring this uh, secretly negotiated uh, TPP to the table, mm -hmm. there will be two weeks for the public to see what's in it. There will be no amendments. There'll be very little debate about it. But you can still put pressure on your representatives on that final up or down vote. And that's what we really have to do. We have to have a full court press to get everybody to grab them by the back of the neck, melt their phone lines about this because mm -hmm. that still works. That's why they're doing this. I'm very cynical about the electoral process as you probably are as well, but that's why they're doing this on a holiday weekend. They are still afraid of public awareness. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, thank you, David. But whether it's this or something else, you have to stay vigilant and not forget that all these things are coming. If they fail on this, they'll repackage it, send it out there, and have something brand new by the end of the month. So you have to stay vigilant. And I hope you enjoy your holiday weekend. But kids how many? how many did i adopt i kill my kids i kill my kids Those babies i pay for that no 
or something? I pay all I'm, my money for that. I get free wicked, abortions on demand wicked. without apology. You are wicked as yep. hell. And I'm going to hell. No. Yeah, I still pay to kill babies, though. Really? Oh, yeah. How do you get your abortions paid for? I pay for them. I thought really? you said I mean, free. You pay for it. Uh, upwards of 50. Really? Oh, yeah. Wow, you must make I a lot of I raise money, money from the community for it. Oh, you don't use yep. your money? You, you multiply your efforts, huh? Well, we're down here pointing out that all black lives matter, all lives matter, and that the very people who want to literally wipe out black Americans uh, through Planned Parenthood on record are the ones trying to create this whole race war and garbage off some of these tragedies. So we're pointing out the real organized genocide with the documented proof. We're talking to a lot of great folks. Sir, give us your take on all this. Yeah, I think that uh, we're going to continue forward as a country. That we need to. Uh, Excuse us! 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 Move away from the street, man. You're gonna get hurt. Move away from the street. Bro, you gotta chill, bro. Your boy is attacking me. Get the f out of here. Get out of here. Get the hell out of here. Don't touch that. Hey, your God's falling. Hey, we had you guys on video. Your God's falling. You're weak. Your God's weak. Look at these clouds. Watch out. Watch out. Clouds. Watch out. Watch out. Just grab the mic again. Look at these clouds. Hey. hey. He took the mic. Don't get the footage. Hey, don't beat him up. Hey. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to get these guys out of their parking lot. Yeah, you just got a lot of feet. Show this. Yeah, we're trying to get out of their parking lot. Yeah, we get out of your parking lot. Hey, brother, we just got assaulted. We're just getting the private. Let's go. All right, here you go. People ask me why I'm a Christian, why I talk about God. I don't mean these fake churches. I face the New World Order over and over again. They're all devil worshippers. Yeah! Real. We know who they are, and we're sick of them. And you've been ousted. We're sick of you hurting children, you filth. We see you. We, we see fear. you, and humanity's rising. And you sit there and him pick you. us and tell us to submit. We'll never submit to you, and, and humanity's yeah. rising. She was the founder of the American Birth Control League and the publisher of its newsletter, The Birth Control Review. On a practical level, the relationship between Sanger and these elitists was uh, basically a marriage of convenience. The result was that the American Birth Control League became the driving force behind the American eugenics movement. Eugenics would no longer just be a philosophy. Sanger and others like her were going to put it into practice. We are paying for and even submitting to the dictates of an ever-increasing, unceasingly spawning class of human beings who never should have been born at all. Margaret Sanger, 1922. Say that again, who do you love? Oh my God. I love Satan, so fuck you. And you're not Stalin supporters? I can't, no, I'm not. I'm Hold on, so, so there's not a Facebook with you saying you love Stalin. Get the off of me! Go away! I'm just asking, Go I don't know. Go away! Go away! How many did I adopt? I kill my kids. Ultimately, your sympathies do not lie with black people. They lie with your racist white middle class agenda, and that's where it will always lie, and you will be destroyed holding that line. It needs to be smacked. Capitalism is a right. Wait a minute, you marching a Black Lives Matter thing with a hammer and sickle? Is that you? What are you talking about? We're just asking. Are you hearing that? Are you talking to the way you're talking about We're just asking you, that's on Facebook. We got her on TV right now. That's really impressive, Bailey. That's really impressive. That is impressive. Hey, man, it's just lizard people. Lizard people. I've never met an alien before. What's it like? Which planet? What do they sound like? Schizophrenia is serious, bro. Yeah, it is. You should probably take it.
Anyways, do you have any language skills other than cuss words? <laughs> no, more pathetic than Gollum. More pathetic than Gollum from Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Oh, wait, you don't want to talk? Not to you. You just want to block everybody else's microphones? I don't want to talk to you. Why the f*** would I want to talk to you? You sure came out here and you sure, you sure made fools of yourself, so thank you. Uh-huh.